Welcome here again. I call this discussion prophecy and territorial spirits. Territorial spirits are special class of spirits that every prophetic person or every individual born of God is supposed to know how to handle. Before I go on, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe to my channel right away. Like this video, comment and share to bless others. Don't forget as well to tell me how this video has affected you in the comment section. Let's look at God's word for prophecy and territorial spirits in Daniel chapter 7 verse 2. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by the night and behold the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea and four beasts came up from the sea, divers from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wing. I beheld till its wings were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand up upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And I behold another beast, a second, like a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said, Thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. Verse 6, After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon its back four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After these I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet, and it was divers from all the beasts that we are before it and it had ten horns and i considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horn plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men and a mouth speaking great things and I beheld till thrones were set in place and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was as white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like fiery flame and its wheels as burning fire. Talking about prophecy and territorial spirits, there are basic issues that every men or women of God, every born-again child of God must know. We've got territorial spirits. We've got regional spirits. In the vision pinned out by Daniel to us here, he had received this encounter in a dream, a vision of the night where God spoke with him. And like I had said, in a previous video where I talked about prophetic dreams. This dream most likely came to Daniel in sleep stage four, the rapid eye movement stage. That's most likely where it came to have been elaborate as this, as presented by the prophet Daniel. In his narration, he had said that he saw the four winds striving on the face of the sea. And he said, while he beheld the four winds striving on the face of the sea, he said, I looked and I behold, four beasts came up and they were divers. Then he decided to describe the manner of the first beast, the manner of the second beast, the manner of the third beast, and the likeness of the fourth beast given us some integral or essential details. A concern, however, in this video is not on the specifics of the individual beast presented by Daniel here, including the throne set and the ancient of these taking his seat there 
and the other issues that surrounded the appearance of the ancient of these, including the thousand of thousands that ministered to him. And then the 10,000 times 10,000 that stood by him, indicating 100 million angelic beings standing by him and a million beings ministering on him. We put that off a little. The thing is that as a child of God and as somebody who is calling the prophetic, <laughs> The writer of the book of Hebrews said that we must proceed from foundational or elementary doctrines, basic issues. Maturity is an issue that we must proceed under. Apostle Peter had written that we as babies feeding on the sincere milk on the word now begin to grow into living stones. Originally we were not. But if we become living stones, then we are becoming apparently strong and powerful. That's what it connotes. Coming back to Hebrews and chapter 6, and as you read from verse 1, the author there talked about advancing into deeper things. What I want to make you understand here is that for me, as a prophetic person, with the advancement in the prophetic that we are inclining to, like Danny had specifically said, that in the end, knowledge shall increase. Yeah. And those who know their God shall do great exploits. The prophetic age have come to bring a light to the entire body of Christ so that the evangelists can be prophetic, the pastors can be prophetic, the apostles can be prophetic, and you sitting under them can as well be prophetic. Yeah. Danny sat on that Jeremiah's uh, teachings. And then he became prophetic. For you to ever rise, to become mighty, it's important that you have an idea of territorial powers. What Daniel saw here is a symbolic of territorial powers, original powers. There are things that can be on the sea around that others cannot see, but prophetic folks can see but which affects the overall life or outcome of the people of that territory. How can I subdue or conquer territorial spirits? How can I receive a prophetic word that subdue them? How can my prophetic ministry rule over or prevail over territorial powers? You have this to learn. The ability to manage with mastery the types of vision that exist. Every child of God on an average note should be able to come to a point where you start growing in your understanding and access to visions. Here, Daniel's expertise came up or came through with the vision of the night, which is dream. You do have dream, or you may have had at least one for once that shows that you can develop this ability. You see, because I was able to see, I'm now able to read. So if you can have any kind of dream, you can also develop yourself in such a way that you have controlled dreams, cultured dreams that are prophetic. If I am able to see the territorial spirits that exist, the reality is that they exist in a territory before you ever came into that territory, okay? And unless somebody had overpowered them, before you came into that territory. If you come to a place where a prophet, a major prophet, have worked and overthrown the territorial spirits there, you are most likely not to battle with the same territorial spirits. But the thing is that the territorial spirits in a place where you're coming from, maybe your hometown, can still track you. So you must know how to subdue them. The next thing is that yes, let's not play with the concept of prophetic senses so we can interact with the unseen realm and be able to identify the critical characters, including critical demonic characters, bearing authority over the specific territory into which you have been sent to serve or that you have come to do your business or live your life. Next to this, if I have good knowledge, profound depth of the prophetic gifts 
and I even advance into a profound depth with the prophetic codes. As a pastor, I may not be in a prophetic office. I may not even be prophesying. But the thing is that I will be able to operate better in my office as a pastor than someone who is not that enlightened. Let me give you this example from the medical field. Somebody's a nurse, trained nurse. The other person is a trained theater nurse. If the two of them were to be in a theater to assist a surgeon, the theater nurse will perform better than the trained nurse who isn't inclined in theater issues. A versatile pastor will do better. A profound knowledge of the gifts of the Holy Spirit positions you whether you can operate them effectively or not, but have a wealth of knowledge regarding this. Like any other career that is noble, you may learn 100% of the course, but you actually use 10% or less than 5% of what you have known in practice. When we have this, we will be able to not only speak into the territory, like Apostle Paul said, I fight not like somebody who is blowing the wind. You should know what you're blowing. So when you throw in your spiritual arrows or weapons in the place of prayer, you know which territorial spirit you are dealing with by name, location, and pattern or manner of operation manner of appearance like daniel described here he said this one had eagle's wings but it was like a lion and he looked until the wings were plucked out and it rose and stood like a man so now that it's risen and stood like a man you can know where to throw your weapon to so you don't throw it to a lion on the ground or to an eagle that is flying in the air and miss your target many pastors pray very well but they pray in the wrong direction, throw their bullets in the wrong direction to the wrong places because they can't see or perceive. Pick these things <laughs> they are supposed to be a fighting against. And if you're under such pastors too, they'll lead you to pray their way. Whether you are as forensic with prophesying like me or not, the thing is that a deep depth of knowledge with respect to the prophetic scope that I just highlighted will position you to do better with or against territorial spirits. As many people as you see saying they're dealing with territorial spirits but they're not having their mind beating in sync in terms of frequency with the eye of God watching over their region if God is watching over you, he's positioned you as a watchman. And if you're a watchman and you say, I'm a watchman, watch people see. You should be able to see. We may have depths with difference with which we see, please. But you should be able to see this. God is not biased when it comes to revealing territorial spirits. But you must be conscious of the presence of these things like Daniel had, and thank God for the man Daniel, who had that depth with the understanding of the revelational uh, propensity God attached to dreams, so that he was able to, with dreams, pick some of the clearest revelations required to place us in a place where prophetically we are profound in this age. The spirit realm is highly mechanical. And knowledge governs the spirit realm. So you see Daniel's analysis of beasts. It's good you know this. Territorial spirits can either be a principality or a power. Occasionally, when a principality or power is not in place, spiritual wickedness or the rulers of the darkness can temporarily mount that location awaiting the installation of a principality which may be an agent or a demon depending on the economic relevance in the spirit realm of the territory in question every great person you see anywhere have got a way 
of interacting with territorial spirits successfully. So as a student of spirituality, that you want to go deep into dealing with territorial spirits, which may be principalities or powers, you settle down, dig into scriptures like these, pray deeply, and uh, have God pass you through revelations upon revelations. Let's not put spirituality too far from real life experience. We're humans, so we've got the spirit of God in us. We've got the image of God in us. We can interact with the spirit uh, realm on a normal note, any day, any time, provided you're guided the right way. So you need to be around the right teacher, a right mentor, uh, to show you in steps how to rule over territorial spirits. And one of the things that makes it difficult is when you've got a spouse that is not cooperating. Yeah. Or you've got teammates that are not cooperating. Because this thing is a battle of knowledge. Yeah. And there have to be unity in your camp. And uh, at a point when the unity is not coming forth, what you need to do is to separate yourself from the others. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego separated themselves because they operated in sync. Once Judas was not part of them, the eleven were parted from him in a way. I hope you have that in the back of your mind because you we progress in knowledge and, and people who are not willing to progress in spiritual knowledge if they are a part of your camp or form an integral part of you, they are likely to limit the ease with which you can rise and to be able to subdue the powers or principalities that bears the mark of territorial spirits around the territory that you find yourself. So that there are times when it's not about them, it's about you. So you need to stand alone and lean on God and with mentors and a spiritual power that puts you through. Over time, you become a territorial commander yourself.